customer experience. It's closing the loop. Many companies, they do ads, they get customers, but they don't listen to what they say. And why would you do that? Why would you pay so much on ads? And why wouldn't you decrease the customer acquisition cost by yeah. learning from actual customers how to communicate to new ones and what to fix so that the existing ones come back to buy again. If you're finding value in what you're watching, consider hitting the subscribe button and turning on the bell notification. Oh, and don't forget to drop a comment. I love hearing your thoughts and ideas. By the way, we have got a ton of other videos waiting for you. And if you are ready to level up your mindset, come hang out with us in our private Facebook group called Mindset for Business Success. Welcome to Super Entrepreneurs Podcast. I'm your host, Shahid Dharani. Today we have with us Valentine Radu, the pioneer of CVO movement, customer value optimization, and the founder of CVO Academy, where he teamed up with prominent professors and practitioners to teach people how to achieve sustainable growth. Welcome to our show, my friend. Hi there, Shahed, and uh, hello, everyone. I'm really excited to be here with you. Great. So can you just walk us through the key stages of the funnel, of the conversion funnel, and then if there's any effective strategies for optimizing the rate at each stage? Yeah, 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 for sure. So Shahed, yeah. I think what's important to, to understand is that these stages are not set in stone, but they are clear mm -hmm. regarding the awareness over the solutions that you're after. So in, in real life, when we have a need, we have a job to be done, we have something to make progress with, it all starts with a, with an itch, right? It all starts with a struggle. So you might be problem aware or not. So if you're not problem aware, you're far from buying whatever you are trying to buy. Let's say a selfie stick or something like that. Yeah. So <laughs> if you don't have an issue with how you're looking in your selfies, then who cares, right? So you're not going to be yeah. able to, to buy something. So the first stage is the Same awareness. as how you bought your mic. Yeah, exactly. Exactly like we, yeah. uh, I bought my, my this microphone. We bought it because we sounded like we are uh, doing these uh, shows from my grandma's bathroom. So eventually yeah. this struggle <laughs> made me aware. Like when I was looking at myself at various podcasts, I, I, I've said, no, that's not me. So I don't want to. No. I don't want to sound like this, right? So the first stage in the funnel is the awareness over the awareness. problem. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then it comes the next, the next stage is you are looking for a solution. So you are getting into this passive looking stage, right? So you are aware that something is itching, but you are not really determined to go out there and to look for a solution, but your ears yeah. are open. If you're hearing from from your friends or whatever, you stumble upon some ads, you are getting interest. So basically we have the awareness over the problem, then we have the passively looking mode, and then we have the actively looking. So when something, another event occurs, it's called the struggling moment, right? So what is the struggling moment? Is that moment when you feel like, I want to change this, that's it, no more. So this is the, today is the day that I'm going to fix this, right? So then, you got into this uh, search mode and then of course you have the interest to to invest into this into this product or solution that you're after and of course the the last stage is the action you and i think many people are trapped into thinking that yes people are buying uh, by looking at our website no it's the the moment the the when the brain placed the seed of change over a solution that they are buying. It's long ago. It might be weeks or months or even years ago. Think of the enterprise uh, companies. They start two years to do those RFPs and whatever over changing their CRM solution. Yeah. So there is a gap. There is a timeline, a buying timeline, and those are the steps. So this is like a high intent decision that you go about and you start searching and making a purchase but what about the emotional ones for example the want creator if there's something that they see and they get emotionally connected to itself you know what i never thought about this but I, now that i see this i really want to get this so there must be stages 
to make that customer convert as well. Yeah. The, the, and these stages to make the customer convert, they are all around where they are in this buying timeline. Because is he passively looking or is he not even aware about the problem? So basically, that's yeah. why you need to make people aware that they do things wrong. They have a problem that they are not aware. So depending on what you're selling, think about car parts. So you, you don't need a new whatever at your engine. You don't need that. So you're not aware, mm. you're not even aware that this is uh, existing. When you are selling these kind of things, you don't have to make people aware that they exist. Because when the need occurs, so when the struggle occurs, people are on the lookout for that thing. But think about, I don't know, all these new products. Device allow you to do, I don't know, I've bought this massage gun. Like, those kind of things. Like, yeah, yeah. I wasn't even oh, aware yeah. about those things. But when I had an yeah. ache here and I called my trainer yeah. and he told me, you know what, I can't help you, man, because I was far away from, from my hometown. So I got online and I bought this freaking massage gun that is portable with me because I have this when I'm training, I tend to have these uh, contractions here. So yeah. basically I got aware of this solution thanks to the pain. So that's why yeah. when you are trying to convert people in, with your website, you need to have content for various states of aware. You need to have okay. content for that's the it. ones which are problem aware, for the ones mm -hmm. that are solution aware. And for the ones that are price aware, so they are already, yeah, the, the, it's not about convincing men that convincing me that these freaking headphones, portable Bluetooth headphones work, but I want to hear why these are the best compared to another, mm. compared to another uh, vendor. So all levels of that awareness can be achieved in the landing page. Yeah, you can do, you can qualify the traffic, but the best would be to begin when you do marketing, you need to do marketing for the struggling moment. Because if you go too far for the ones that are not okay. even problem aware, that is too expensive. You pay mm. dollars to make people aware that there is a problem. You need to make people mm. aware that your solution is the best for their pain that they are already experiencing. And that's why mm. when you do messaging, when you do copywriting, you need to, to address things like doing like this with the knife in, a, in an already existing wound. We have this saying in Romania, mm. like you put mm. salt on the wound. Like yeah. you, you're, yeah. you're already hurting, you have an open wound yeah. and you put there yeah. the salt. So that's why you need yeah. to amplify the pain and the consequences of the pain. Yeah. So that's why you don't yeah. communicate features. You communicate yeah, yeah. the bad emotions and the consequences of yeah. keeping that pain going. Yeah, like punching in the gut, but then right after giving a solution. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. give a Band-Aid. Or the massager. I don't know if you could use a massager on your belly. A few months ago, we purchased one of those as well. And I don't have any pain, but I just thought it was a cool packaging. And I thought that I could still use it to massage myself when I'm just relaxing as a yeah. massager. And then I never used it. I used it maybe once as just sitting there. <laughs> Yeah, I'm. Yeah. Is that kind of thing? If it's not a painkiller, then chances yeah. to buy are not that high. Yeah. And that's why, even though you, yeah. if you're selling vitamins, you need to position them mm. as painkillers. You need to understand what is yeah. the pain in the mm. head of, yeah. uh, of your customer that make the vitamins mm. the uh, a good investment. Because at the end of the day, people need to be convinced. They need just a nudge. Mm. That if you don't use the mm. right nudge, then people are just around your cashier's desk and they are not freaking paying for it. It's like the conversion. You, you look at the mm. cart and you have those cart abandonment rates of 75, 80%. So imagine that people were already convinced. They had their money and you have them persuaded with your cart page or checkout page or messaging. Mm. So even personalization is important in e-commerce. How can e-commerce entrepreneurs effectively uh, personalize that aspect of their experience when buying something. Yeah. I I think that it's a whole debate around personalization and it was it used to be mm. a hot topic, but many marketers yeah. got it wrong because it's not about using then for God's sake, I, I, I'm running a company which is offering the this kind of solution. So it's not in my direct interest to say that, but I have to say it because that's it. When you are using technology and things like 
Hey, name, glad to have you here or whatever. Welcome from city, like welcome from Dallas. It's nice to have you here. Those things are just shallow things. They are, these are not that important. What is important is the pain, is the struggle of that ca uh, customer. So that's why if you have a, I don't know, let's pretend that you are selling a, a pet food. What is important mm. is to get zero party data. Mm. Is your dog sterilized or not? Does it have digestive problems or not? So those things are important. And once you collect them, you can do remarketing with them. You can do landing pages particularly for that. Because are you mm -hmm. sick and tired to have your uh, puppy in those pain thanks to that pet food which has a lot of uh, toxic things in it? Then it's time for our pet food. So basically, when you use these kind of things like zero-party data and things that do matter for the interest of your customer, then personalization works. But when you use just things uh, regarding I don't know, if you're coming from Instagram or from Facebook, yes, you can use that. Hey, fellow visitor from TikTok. But is this that relevant? Is this that impactful? From our experience, it's not. So what is impactful mm. is to have zero-party data and to use these kind of things like city do work when you're selling particular things which are located there. For instance, what worked back in the day, like I'm, I'm talking 12 years ago, we used to run geolocalized testimonials, right? So if you are coming from mm -hmm. Phoenix, there you go. You have a testimonial from uh, a neighbor that you had in, uh, in Phoenix. And we've stated that we have 280 happy, happy customers from Phoenix. This is impactful. So you need to know how to leverage personalization because just putting there the name mm. of the customer or the city. Yes. It has to be more dynamic than that. Yeah. Yeah. When it comes to AI, machine learning is transforming the e-commerce as well, or e-commerce marketing. How can entrepreneurs leverage AI to, to better analyze the data or buying behavior, yeah. even targeting marketing campaigns? Yeah. One use case that smoothly, from my experience, was to get surveys, so you, to get customer feedback. And to understand what's going on with your services. Because in order to have customers come back to buy again so that you're profitable, you need to take into account these three pillars of customer value optimization. What you say, marketing. What you sell, product assortment. And what you do, customer experience. But when it comes to customer experience, few are the brands that really focus on these aspects. And so what they do, they go to Facebook, Google, TikTok. They pay a lot of money on them. People do buy, but they don't come back to buy again. So that's a pity because they are wasting their precious marketing budget to acquire customers. Mm -hmm. that have so what can you do right now with AI? And that's a solution that we've already validated in the market is to collect NPS scores. So customer feedback, net promoter score. And with the NPS, people have an open answer. Like what are the chances to buy again from us or to recommend us to a friend or colleague? And they state zero, one, two, from zero to 10. So then it's a follow-up question. What made you give us this rating? And if you have detractors that gave you zero, one, two, whatever, they already say, hey, or your package was destroyed and I'm not going to buy from you again and blah, 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 blah. And some of them state things regarding the quality of the product or the quality of the delivery or the time of the delivery. But it's hard to, understand, to make sense of all this data when you have many answers. So what you can do with AI with natural language processing, you get all this data and then you get all the issues that are the most impactful. Let's say 68% of your problems are related to the, quad, the size of the shoes. For instance, we've applied this with the company from the US and they found out that their main problem was that they were sending a different size of their shoes. And it, you, mm -hmm. you can't freaking use those products and you end up sending those back and you end up paying a lot of money to get them back and to ship them again. And some of the customers, they were simply that disappointed that they never even bothered to return the product because it wasn't such a high expensive product. So one way to leverage AI, to, to answer your question, Shahed, is to leverage the natural language processing so that you can make sense of the feedback coming from your uh, customers. Another way to do it is to try to do this type of uh, revamping of the copy. But 
on the product pages, but this requires a lot of traffic so that you can validate through A-B test. That's very important. And the fact that you can actually take this data and do something with it, because if someone had to return that shoe, and depending on how many times that is being returned, that's a large scale loss for the company. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's, it's not going to help them by utilizing AI, utilizing platforms in, in that case yeah. that can actually help them see that picture from a bird's yeah. eye view. And, and one important aspect, Shahed, here is to, to, yeah. to take into account the fact that customer experience it's closing the loop. Many companies, they do ads, they get customers, but they don't listen to what they say. And, and, and that's a big yes. Why would you do that? Why would you pay so much on ads? And why wouldn't you decrease the customer acquisition cost by yeah. learning from actual customers how to communicate to new ones and what to fix so that the existing ones come back to buy again? And I think this is the growth mm. flag. It takes into account mm. the customer feedback which allows you to sell better products, to have better messaging, and to have a higher customer retention. So if you don't put mm. this, the, the, the customers uh, at the center of your marketing efforts, then you are shooting in the dark. And it's surprisingly common, unfortunately. But this is why by doing these types of episodes, you can bring more awareness to help yeah. people elevate their business. So I appreciate your time today. With mobile shopping, most people are on their phone. Is there anything that you can recommend that entrepreneurs can do to optimize the shopping experience on a mobile device to, to drive more sales? Yeah, I think one, one important aspect is to do A-B testing because the desktop experience is mm. different than the mobile experience. So my suggestion mm. is to, to tweak the website for the mobile experience according to what's there in the viewport because the common experience is pretty long. So you put there like nine screens of scrolling. And by the way, as a side note, I've just heard this. Maybe it's interesting, like the average person right now is doing eight miles per month with this thumb. You are scrolling down eight miles every month. Mm, wow. You're getting a summer. So my suggestion for the mobile experience Look at how your first screen is matching the intention of your, of your visitors. And then use the real estate, not for banners, but for filters. Because the filter users are the ones that are buying, the ones that are already problem aware and solution aware, right? So you, you need to have your filters and the search bar properly rather than the banners trying to squeeze whatever offer you have. Because it doesn't matter that you have an offer for, I don't know, fresh uh, uh, fruits, if I'm there to buy milk. So that's why make sure that in the first screen, you A-B test what you have to put over there because the attention span is very low these days. Mm, so true. And uh, can you share any kind of strategies or actionable steps that e-commerce entrepreneurs can take for building Further customer loyalty and yeah. increase repeat purchases. Yeah. yeah, 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 for sure. So is this methodology, I've become obsessed, to be honest, about customer lifetime yeah. value in e-commerce. So I wrote a yeah. book about it. It's here. So it's yeah. called The CLB Revolution. What is it called? Revolution. It's called The CLB Revolution. Oh, yes. It is. Yeah. Yes, so yes. Good, good, good. Basically, six years ago, I was obsessed of, uh, with, with, with this kind of thing. So I've built this, this methodology. The first thing is to measure what matters, right? So to measure customer retention and customer lifetime value. You can't increase what you don't measure. The second step is to get feedback from customers to understand what's wrong with the products, with the marketing, with the customer experience. Then after that, you do customer segmentation so that you understand who are your best customers. And then mm -hmm. you analyze their feedback so that you understand who are the best ones? And the best customers, they make up to 200 times more than the average customers when it comes to net profit. Because you pay the customer acquisition once, and then they come back six, eight, ten times. So those are the best customers, the ideal ones. And once you get mm -hmm. this kind of feedback, you craft the customer journey according to what you found out. So as you can see, the customer research is at the center of this methodology. Measure what matters, back, segment your customers, and then 
apply their feedback throughout the customer journey. Can you speak briefly about driving sales in seasonal periods, holiday seasons, any other type of seasons? Is there something that e-commerce entrepreneurs can focus on during those mm -hmm. times? Any trends? Yeah. So what I think it's important is to, to build a list. So to build, to have your own email list, because if you have your email mm. list ready, then you can blast them. So you have your previous customers from last year, <laughs> then you can mm -hmm. tease them before the, the season begins. Let's say warn them that you have a fantastic offer that will happen. So that's the first uh, thing that you should be doing. Another thing is mm. to collect, to collect uh, leads. So to have this type of pre-campaign offers so that you give them like, I don't know, give them a wish list, for instance, yeah? Allow them to build their wish list with a chance to win that wish list because it's a very low barrier entry and they give you yeah. feedback around the products that you should be putting at your offer because when you're browsing and you select product A, B, C, and D, then you know that if 80% of your customers selected product A in their wish list, there you go. That's your, that's your hook. That's your product that you should be using in your campaigns. And then when the season begins, make sure that you have everything orchestrated, right? All these campaigns, email ads, remarketing campaigns are orchestrated already. So plan ahead is it's the whole idea and leverage your existing list by and, and also build a list by teasing them with something which is not that expensive for you. So I think wish lists are an underrated method to drive sales during the peak seasons. Great. It was great chatting with you today. I hope we added value to our audience and with the information today. And uh, definitely it's well needed because there's so much noise out there and you want to do better than you have been doing, right? Than yesterday, at least. So right. this information, we provided some pointers, some directions that they could take. Thank you for your time. Appreciate you. Looking forward to seeing you again on the show. If there's anything else that you're launching or, or anything new and exciting that you wanted to chat about, that will be great. Thank you, Shahed. And uh, looking forward to connecting again and chatting again. It's been great have, making this happen. And for you out there, check out Omniconvert and The CLV Revolution, my book, if you want to hear more about it. <laughs>